Joe, LA is known for having some of the best ramen in the US. That's what I've heard. We're gonna try it all. We're gonna try tonkatsu. No idea. We're gonna try skemen. Never heard of it. We're gonna try shio. Sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Since Joe and I are somewhat new to Los Angeles, we called in a ringer. Meet Mark Hoshi. He's a former ramen chef and runs Ramen Culture. His mission is to help people understand more about the ramen industry as a whole. We talked to Mark and combed through the usual suspects like Eater, Yelp, and Instagram to find the absolute best ramen in LA. There are endless varieties of ramen, and we wanted to showcase the wide swath of options available in our fair city. Despite the difference in broth and noodles, we're looking for a few key factors, which Mark helped break down for us. So to make a bowl of ramen, you, th you need five elements, five components. Number one, the noodles. Number two, the soup. Number three, the soup base. Number four, the topping. And number five, the aroma oil. Ramen has always been innovative. So if you live in Tokyo, or if you live in the northern part in Hokkaido, or southern part in Kyushu, they all have their own version of ramen. The reason why is they get different ingredients in different regions. Ramen doesn't have to be this way or that way. I feel like it's your bowl. Our first step is Daikokia, which has been an LA staple since 2002. It's known for its rich pork-based tonkatsu ramen, and there have been lines out the door since it opened. Daikokuya has been around before the ramen craze. So people who lived near Tokyo or people like me who's Japanese, when you wanted quality ramen, it was usually Daikokuya. There wasn't much like ramen restaurant around at the time. Then we had a kind of fast restaurant that specialized ramen, special curry, uh, before it became even popular like right now. I love this place. The ramen, amazing. Like, it's one of the best places I've ever been to, for sure. Like, and I eat a lot of ramen, so. <laughs> the tonkatsu broth is made with actual pork bones for maximum porky flavor, and it simmers all night long. Then, for the signature Daikoku ramen, they start with shoyu, or soy base, and add the tonkatsu broth. The bowl is finished with cha su pork, bean sprouts, scallions, bamboo shoots, an egg, and sesame seeds. This looks incredible. It smells like pork fat. It smells perfect. Allow me to embarrass myself by trying to do this the way it's supposed to. I like to do it, what like do put do? a little broth in here, uh -huh. and then I like to put a little noodle like in my spoon. Uh -huh. That's like my favorite way to eat ramen. I know that some people like to slurp, some people like to do a lot of other things. This is what I like to do, because I just feel you get like soup uh -huh. and noodle in the same bite. Okay, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do this one. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Wow. It's really fatty, really rich. That broth. Oh, that broth is amazing. Mm. But like low-key, I'm gonna add a little bit more garlic into mine. I like it to be stinky. The, the noodle, just with the broth, absolutely incredible flavor, right? And then the second hits your lips, you're like, yep, I can see why everyone's standing in line and wants this, you know? The noodles are perfectly al dente. They're nice and chewy. Um, and I like that they're like a little uh, curly, so they like pick up on all the broth. I've been eyeing this pork for a while. We saw my guy slicing it back there. Look at that, look at that perfect piece of pork. Which camera one, camera two, camera? Look at that pork. What's the pork taste like? I'm about to go in. You explain it while like I eat. It's like pork perfection. <laughs> it's a bit of a fatty cut, but because it's been simmering so long in this broth, melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. If you're a ramen newbie, I don't know where you've been, but this is a really good place to start. Oh, P.S. They also marinate this egg in pork fat, so I'm sure it's going to be really delicious. Yeah. Bite of this. Oh man, you see how it's jiggly? Yeah. I think that means that there's a runny yolk in there, guys. The anticipation's killing me. <laughs> I'm just floored by this ramen. I mean, I went to Japan and had lots of ramen there, but this one is like, oh wow. This is like the bog standard for ramen in Los Angeles, and it's a lot to live up to. Our next stop in this ramen journey is Okiboru in Chinatown. 
It was listed as one of the Michelin Bib Gourmand restaurants for 2019, notably for its Scammon style ramen. And I'm notable for not knowing what that is, but I'm excited to find out. Sukimen is actually uh, dipping ramen, so noodles are served on the side, and they are, they are cold, and you dip it into a hot broth and eat it that way. It was invented in 1961, actually, by a man called um, Kazuo Yamagishi. In Japan, basically, we have soba noodles, and what they would do in the summer is cool down the soba buckwheat noodles and dip it in dashi soup base, and they were slurp it up. So he made the ramen version of that dish and called it the skimmin. We wanted to make our own noodles because we wanted to match it with the broth. Because, you know, after testing so many different types of noodles, we realized that um, for the broth we were making, we wanted a particular flavor. So we wanted to be able to, be able to control that instead of just purchasing them. Uh, it is a lot more work, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think you'll notice the difference between fresh noodles and something that was purchased. Sure. Noodles are exactly how I like them, like al dente. It has like that balance, that shoot. I'm here at least once a week. Like this week, I'm here. I, I was here Tuesday, and now I'm here again. Scammon soup is more concentrated than other types of ramen. It can take Okuboro two full days to cook and reduce its soup. And the soup we're eating today is made with what exactly? We're eating the pork-based broth with seafood today, but you can get chicken or veggie too. And uh, what exactly is happening here? The broth is cooled, and since it's reduced so much, all the fat congeals. It gets heated to order and mixed with the ramen base. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to eat this. Great. Okay. I need so help. First, the lime is actually for the noodles. So you're just going to squeeze the juice on there. Okay. okay. The broth is uh, rich, so the, um, the lime juice helps with balance it out a little bit. Okay, yeah. cool. And then you're going to take some of these noodles. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a I'm the worst with the sticks, yeah. man. I'm the worst you with the forks, sticks. Just let me know. Oh, God. <laughs> so, like, what's the right amount of noodles to get, pick up? You, you know, for me, I like to just do, like, two, three bites at a time. Because okay. you, if you put too much, it's going to cool down the broth too fast. Yeah. This gets a little messy, but with sukimen, ramen, mm -hmm. slurping is a uh, part of it. Really? Right. The louder you slurp in Japan, the more you're enjoying your meal. <laughs> <laughs> the people love it. <laughs> All right, ready, Joe? Yeah, let's do this. Mm. Wow. What do you think? Mm. That is flavorful. That really mm -hmm. packs a punch. This is the first time I had a dipping ramen. Yes. And I already have noticed that with the broth being kind of like stuck to the noodles because it's so much more condensed, you get way more flavor. Yes, Because yes, usually exactly. when I eat ramen, you know, it's almost like a bowl of soup. And I could be doing it wrong, but I'm just like <laughs> like doing, doing doing one of these things oh, and yeah, trying, yeah, to, yeah. trying to lap it in there. The pork in the broth. Oh, I've already eaten it. Oh my goodness. Compare <laughs> that to the pork that's also in here. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at soul ring. Wow. It takes practice. Does it really? <laughs> I mean, pork? clearly. So this was uh, quite the different ramen experience, I think. I think so. I have not had this style of ramen before, and I absolutely loved it. Now, it's time to drive to the west side and hit up Santoka Ramen. It's another LA favorite that's located inside Japanese grocery chain Mitsuwa. The signature salt ramen comes with chasu pork, mushrooms, bamboo shoots, scallions, narudumaki, and a salted plum. One thing I appreciate about Santoka is when I go to New York, or New Jersey, or Boston, or uh, here in LA, they have multiple locations, but their flavor doesn't fluctuate. So it's consistent. That's what I really respect about them. So I'm dumb. Is this actual food or is this fake? This is fake. Yeah, okay. They did, we did the video about who makes this, right? Yes, we did. But it's really funny that you would think this is real. So you have to wait until your number's called, and they just called our number. Don't stand up there. <laughs> so Clog good. it up. Get my ramen. Right. I'll hang out here. That's for you. Thanks. That's right. That's for you. Thank you. Stop it. <laughs> it's even my mom. Here's yours. This is mine. All right, I get it. I understand. Wow. 
I like that a lot. Oh, I love it. And you know, it's not too salty. The really like nutty flavor I'm getting from the sesame is interesting and really delicious and a nice break from like the really, really heavy fatty broth I think that we've tried so far. Let's try this. Whoa. Pork. The pork's good? Great. Pork is fantastic. Mm. Wow. Mmm. You know when you get like an Italian sub with like broccolini and stuff like that on like a nice roll? I wouldn't get that, but yeah, I understand what you mean. First of all, it's delicious. You should absolutely try that. Second of all, this is what it reminds me of, like a nice like Italian roast pork. The noodles are chewy, perfectly cooked, absolutely delicious. It's it's um, a nostalgic kind of ramen, I think. It's definitely, this is the kind of ramen that I remember trying like for the first time ever. The noodle consistency, like these really thin ones, you know, almost like the instant ramen you would get, by the way. Instant yeah. ramen is the absolute best. I love it, so that's not a dig on noodles or instant ramen. It's not at all. But what I like about this one is everything is really coming together yeah. perfectly, just creating this experience where you get a little bit of everything. We saved the most gut-busting ramen for last with Sujita Annex. They serve Jiro-style ramen here, which can sometimes have up to 1,600 calories per bowl. Yikes! The style is basically known for their thick noodles and also their rich, fatty pork broth with shoyu base, and it has bean sprouts and cabbages as a topping. After I eat a bowl of Jiro, it's like a bad hangover. It's good. You're having a good time eating. It's amazing. But then you realize you ate too much. The acid's right, the garlic's right, yeah. I mean, you, you smell for a little bit afterwards, but it, it's worth it. I think garlic and uh, fat makes the best broth, and people love it. I wouldn't say there's a right way to eat ramen. Sujita Annex and Jiro style ramen as a whole is known for adding extra pork fat to the broth. It's so fatty, you can pick up pieces of fat with chopsticks. So we have ourselves some Jiro style ramen. It's got extra back fat on the top. <laughs> extra back fat, please. Yep. It's really, really rich. It's not, I don't think, advisable to eat a whole bowl by yourself, but I see some great souls around here that are kind of going for it. There was a sign that said each you have to get one, so I think people were getting used to just splitting one. They're like, nah, 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 nah. It's nah. rich. This is the richest ramen we'll have on this adventure. Wow. There is something extra special in here, aside from all the fat. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's delicious. The pork, as thick as it is, melts in your mouth. It just falls apart the second you bite into it. All right, I'm gonna go it for it. It is so juicy and soft. Right? Oh my God. This mm. is sensational. The pork itself is incredibly flavorful and a little sweet on the outside too. The noodles. They go up like lightning fast because they're just dripping with fat. I was a bit, to be honest, visually I was like, oh no, thick noodles. These are awesome. But these are actually pretty incredible. All in all, like for as heavy as this is, it's delicious, it's rich, it's fatty, it's greasy. It's almost like the junk food of ramen. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. it's finally time to choose the best of the best. All right, so we've eaten a lot of ramen. A lot of ramen. Four kinds of ramen. Four great kinds of ramen. And now we're picking the winner, the best ramen in LA. Let's do it. And I look at my phone because I don't want to spell it wrong. <laughs> Sid likes about hard choices. And we have to make an incredibly hard choice. Mm -hmm which of the four were the best of the best in Los Angeles. I felt like it was an easy choice for me. Okay, I did not. Really? I was down, there was three that I was like, that on any day could be the best one. I had to really think about it. All right, ready? Ready, one, one two, two, three. three. Uh, I knew you were gonna pick that. Why'd you know? <laughs> you have better handwriting than me. Thank I you, say. thank yeah. you. All right, so we gotta break this down. Okay. There can only be one. There can only be one. Um, the reason I'm picking Okiboru is 
those handmade noodles, man. Mm -hmm. They were so good. Yeah. I love that you could add lime to the noodles. I loved that citrus element to like the rich uh, soup. I don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really just, you know, I loved dipping the noodles in the broth and like getting a good amount of everything in one bite as opposed to trying to like, you know, figure out how to get like soup and noodle in the same bite. Points off for that place for the exact thing that dipping. I know that's the style, but for me, this was first of all, a classic ramen bowl. And also, I mean, hey man, the, the whole thing was super fatty. And that makes it taste really good. The second we tasted it, I was like, oh man. I know this probably isn't the best for me, but this flavor is incredible. It's just something about it just cranked it up to 11 for me. And every bite with the broth, the meat, the noodles, everything was just soaked in this rich fat that I just couldn't get enough of. We have to decide on one winner. Yeah, okay. And the reason that I'm going to go ahead and agree with you and yeah. pick Sujita is because it was my second favorite. Mm -hmm and it is really, really delicious. And okiburu is skemen, which people could potentially argue is not like a traditional ramen. Fair enough. Um, and Rujiro style is not as well known as it should be and absolutely delicious. So we can go ahead and declare Sujita yeah! the winner. Yeah! You hear that, Sujita? When I come in, I want a table right away. I'm not waiting. I just hooked you guys up. All right, well, until next time, let us know what we missed. Um, there's a lot of ramen in LA and we just scratched the surface. That's right. So until next time.